Hello everyone and welcome to Cinderful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video is a Black Library review. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at one of the many publications brought out by a Black Library and giving you our thoughts on the book audio drama whatever it happens to be now i will say that we will try to keep this review to as spoiler free as possible though there will obviously be points where we talk about things happening in the book we will try to keep away from saying any of the major plot points so you can go and read this book for yourself we'll just give you our thoughts on whether or not we think it is something you may be interested in so we'll use this video to instruct you on maybe is this sort of going to be a book that you would like to see with that all said and out the way let's get cracking on let's talk a little bit about the book that we have reviewed this time in today's Black Library review, we're going to be checking out The Hollow King by John French. Now, as always, I like to listen to the audio versions of these, and this one is narrated by Richard Reed. Always a fantastic listen whenever Richard Reed is narrating an audiobook. Now, The Hollow King is really interesting for Warhammer Age of Sigmar in that it came out with a brand new model for Kato Ezekiah. Uh, this came out with book and a model at the same time this past weekend gone past, um, and it's really cool. So, I like seeing characters come to life from Black Library Fiction. We've got a ton of characters coming out of the narrative, coming to life lately. Obviously, we've got a Steel Soul, Lady of Vines. We've now had Brod as well, the Gargant King himself, come to life. So, let's get cracking on into the review pro and so the story so well obviously the major part of this is Kato Ezekiah he's a wanderer who's outlived the age that made him he is before the time of chaos he is actually from the age of myth he's a soul blight vampire who accepted the curse as his people and kingdom fell around him to chaos he now roams the realm of death and the other mortal realms seeking retribution and salvation for the ones he failed He's aided by the bound spirits of those he lost. Nine rings of power on his hands, containing the souls of many of his closest friends, allies, and some others as well. As he uses them to follow a path of revenge, hunting the servants of chaos down that doomed his kingdom, seeking and slaking his need for blood, he is a vampire, while seeking the sorcerer of change who destroyed his kingdom. When the hunt leads him to the free city of Venthus, which is where our story takes place, Kato becomes caught up in the machinations of greater powers, pretty much a game of godly creatures, gods claiming this particular town for themselves, and he sort of gets jumbled up all in between it. Um... Which is, you know, a little bit difficult, because he's torn between his code of honour. He is, you know... For all intents and purposes, a good vampire. Uh, he does not, you know, take the lives of innocents and all of that. Um, he only hunts and takes the blood of those he uh, deems, you know, to have been forsaken. And he has this deep desire for vengeance, however, so he's got to sort of balance this. He is, you know, for all intents and purposes, a monster. Um, Kato, however, has to navigate a web of war and indeed deceit, or he might lose absolutely everything. And so the book's purpose. This story properly and fully introduces to Kato Ezekiah in all his glory. Uh, we've obviously had a couple of the short stories we did, Beasts, not too long ago, uh, looking at a couple of the little short stories that we've had for Kato. And indeed, we've got a couple of short stories on Drecky Flint. We'll have his novel up for review next. Um, but this shines a light on this hero of the mortal realm because Kato is a hero. Um, he's, you know, this character sort of shrouded in darkness, not I guess entirely by his own making you know people see a vampire and they expect certain things but this really does sort of let us into his world and show us that he is a hero we get to learn about him and indeed his past life which is really cool because like I said at the beginning he's from the age of myth and we get to learn about many of the souls that are contained within his rings not all of them though which I think is really cool and definitely leads to more stories down the line if I can remember I think there's about four souls we get to to learn about in these particular rings and so there's still five of them to go which is awesome uh, that we you know just don't have all the details of all the rings yet um, and there's definitely some really cool characters in those rings just in this book alone 
And so, of course, our main character is Kato Ezekiah. Like I said, I've gone through pretty much who Kato Ezekiah is. He's a soul life vampire. He is, you know, has this honorable code that he abides by, and he's hunting down these worshippers of a chaos cult uh, known as the Burning Hand, a bunch of Zinchin cultists. And so, what does change about Kato over the course of this story? Well, certainly... Um, his character in this story, more than any, is really well rounded out. I feel his character development isn't entirely, um, you know, a massive sort of turning point in any part of this throughout the story. We're really just learning about how Kato feels, how he reacts to the world around him, and stuff like that within the story. I feel within the next few stories we get about Kato, we will definitely see more of the evolution of his character. But certainly, there is some big evolution in the things that he's aiming to achieve. He realizes and learns different things over the course of this story about what and who he is actually hunting and seeking vengeance against. What does the book do well, though? And so, for me, there are a lot of moving parts within the story. There are definitely uh, many different sort of intertwining ambitions, goals, and plots within the story. This does lead to some really interesting encounters and situations, learning about different sort of, I guess, interactions between different factions in the Warhammer universe. But a great part for me personally is I really like how the vampire himself, Kato, is actually less of a monster than many others within the story. This really harkens me back to reading a dynasty of monsters where, you know, the Vengorian lords and Lauka Vi were certainly less monstrous than the actual humans in the story. They were the ones with the honor and the nobility. And you definitely sort of get that vibe where even though he's, you know, this blood hungering vampire, he's actually, you know, less scary and less monstrous than some of the other things that we meet with in the story. Now, who would like and enjoy this book? Now, obviously, if you like Soul Light Grave Lords and you, you know, think that Death are the good guys, this definitely has some appeal to you. But for me, I think this is really a story that anyone that is into Age of Sigmar can get behind. It introduces a fun and interesting character to the setting who I'm really excited to see grow and develop more as a character throughout the setting. For me, this is just great stuff like this is what we need more of we've obviously seen you know story arcs like uh guard of steel so and he's come out with a miniature we've seen story arcs of go trek now in age of sigma and i think this is along those same lines where i'm really excited i'm invested in the character not an actual army that that character represents just the character himself and that is what you want from this sort of story so, rating this one, this is engaging. It has very few low points that I feel like I was struggling to get through parts of and does have a lot of memorable scenes, especially towards the end of this book. I have some really memorable parts of this story that I love and enjoyed. For me, this makes it, you know, a strong contender perhaps for my Black Library novel of the year. I've gone with an 8 out of 10, almost, I would say, a 9 out of 10. Uh, for me, there are a couple of little bits I was maybe confused with, um, maybe if I go give this a re-listen it might put it up to that 9 out of 10 but I really did enjoy this I thought this was really solid and I can't wait to see more of this character from John French and indeed from Black Library and so that is the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, why not come join our Discord server as well, which you can find linked in the video's description. Also linked in the video's description is the best way to help support the channel via Patreon or YouTube members. If you'd like to help support either, it would be greatly appreciated as it goes towards making the channel better and better at doing what we continue to do here. We'd like to give a special shout out to all our Patreons and YouTube members, so a thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Greenskins Gaming, Kenny Lowe, Outer and Shop First, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, Anthony B, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domir, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Derek, and GRP390. And also a shout out to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Kenton Young, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny 84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop, Terrain, and John Castle. Lastly, a special shout out to all the people who help support the channel via sponsorship or via collaborations. And a special thanks as well to Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing artwork you see on the channel. 
Thank you all for watching. Once again, everyone, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.